Hello everyone, I'm Justice Graves and I'm currently running to be a member of the School Committee for the Narragansett Regional School District here serving the towns of Templeton and Phillipston, Massachusetts. Today's video is going to be more about local activities that are going on, specifically what is up on the warrant for a vote at the Open Town Meeting next week on Wednesday, May 12th. It's going to be so exciting. These are not stressful meetings at all. Those of you who don't know, because you don't have an open town meeting type of, you know, legislative structure, you have to actually physically show up and vote for your budget, because that's how the budget gets voted in small towns, in person by saying, you know, yay or nay, or if it has to be a hand count, you actually have to physically stand up in front of everybody and everyone gets to stare at you, which personally, I have no problem with conflict, so, you know, people stare at me and whatever, it doesn't bother me. Um, I love the open meeting town format. Uh, not the con you know, not for the controversies and the conflicts, but I think it's fun. If you were here, because I know there are a lot of new subscribers for anything to do with any of the stuff I talked about on that wonderful live stream with Dr. Borisenko and Deb Philman, that's not going to be discussed today. So you can simply just skip this video, and I hope, or you can watch it and you can know what's on, you know, what we are going to be voting for um, in my town. <laughs> I'm going to switch screens in just a second so that you can see what we are voting on. I'm going to go article by article. I'm also going to go over what the advisory committee voted on for recommendations. I'm not going to do the number of the votes, like if it was three to four or four to three, four in favor, you know, however that went. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to tell you if it was unanimous or not. I will tell you on a certain, you know, some of them, I, some of them I do remember because I went through very quickly on that meeting on April 29th to watch it. For those of you who don't know, an advisory committee, at least in terms of what the town of Templeton and Phillipston do, our advisory committees basically look through and make recommendations to our select board. Our select board is our local town leadership, typically consisting of three to five members. That board creates the warrant, they vote on things during the year, they are basically our version of an executive. The open town meeting format is the legislative branch. Me, myself, you know, me, myself, and I, and everybody else who lives in town are essentially, you know, the Congress in that respect because we go and we vote for and appropriate the money. So that is certain that, you know, in a nutshell, that's just how this works. So that way you get the rundown on that. I am going to switch screens in just a second, and we are going to just go line by line on this. Again, this meeting is going to be on May 12th. This has been posted for a while now. I'm not going to go over the voter's guide because I don't think that's going to be very helpful for all intents and purposes. The, the People typically like to know what happens line by line on what we are voting on. That is included in the... Um, in the voters guide the line by line what we are voting on however there's also a bunch of other stuff with it that it's not worth discussing right now so we're just going to get right into it so the warrant for the annual town meeting for the town of templeton which will be on may 12 2021 to either of the constables of the town of templeton in said county because we have two constables that are also on the ballot this year in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the precincts of the town of Templeton County of Worcester qualified to vote in elections and town affairs to meet in the Narragansett Regional Middle School, 460 Baldwinville Road, Baldwinville, in said Templeton on Wednesday, May 12, 2021, at 6 p.m. There, then and there to act on the following articles, and we start with Article 1, Fiscal Year 2021 Operating Budget Amendments. In this article is to see if the town will vote to approve the sum of $105,000 and no cents for supplemental appropriations to the fiscal year 2021 operating budget as follows. Select board 15,000, snow and ice 90,000. And to meet said appropriation by a transfer of said sum from certified free cash or make any other action or to take any other action related thereto. These Advisory Committee voted for a yes vote unanimously on Article 1, so it will most likely pass at town meeting. Article 2, the Consent Agenda, to see if the town will vote to approve a Consent Agenda consisting of the following non-controversial actions or take any other action related thereto. Such items may be voted on as a block or singly or in any combination, but however voted will be treated for accounting and legislative purposes as if each item were voted as a separate article. That is A, the reports of town officers, all the reports of the town officers is printed in the 2020 town report. 
B, the reports of the town committees allow any of the town committees to present their reports. C, set the annual spending limits of revolving funds. Set the annual spending limits of the town's previously created revolving funds as follows. Burial and improvement fund, 10,000. Recycling, 10,000. Plumbing and gas inspector fund, 20,000. Electrical inspector fund, 25,000. Community services fund, 60,000. D, accepting transport, transportation network community fee assessment. Appropriate such sum of money as to may be received by the town from the Massachusetts Transportation Network Community Fee Assessment to a town to an in, to an account entitled Mart Dial a Ride, or take any other action related thereto. Submitted by the Select Board requires majority vote. Article two was voted yes unanimously. However, there was something that the advisory committee will clarify on. Burial and improvements should be called instead the cemetery fund because that is what the appropriate account is. So that is what is going to happen when you go. Don't be surprised when you see that. Article 3, FY22, sewer department operating budget to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,304,100 in no sense to operate the sewer department for fiscal year 2022 and to meet said appropriation by a transfer of $4,100 and no cents from the certified retaining earn from the certified retained earnings of the sewer fund in the balance from the receipts and revenues to be collected on behalf of the sewer department for said fiscal year or take any other action related thereto submitted by the select board for the sewer commission majority vote required article 3 was a unanimous yes by the advisory committee Article 4, Sewer Capital Project, FY22, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $50,000 and no cents toward a program of capital purchases, improvements, and special articles as generally illustrated below, a plant transformer which costs $30,000 and a recirculating water system, $20,000 and to meet said appropriation by a transfer of said sum from the certified retained earnings of the sewer fund or take any other action related thereto submitted by the select board for the sewer commission. Majority vote required. This is article four. It was a yes unanimously by the advisory committee. There were no conflicts on that. Article five, FY22 cable department operating budget to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of 2,000, uh, nope, 222,000 $505 and no cents to operate the cable department for fiscal year 2022 and to meet said appropriation by a transfer of $97,505 and no cents from the certified retained earnings of the cable fund in the balance from the receipts and revenues to be collected on behalf of the cable department for said fiscal year or take any other action related thereto. Submitted by the select board, majority vote required. Article 5 was a yes unanimously by the advisory boards. That is favorable. Article 6, Deposits to General Fund Stabilization and OPAB Accounts, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $125,000 and no cents to make deposits into its op operations or OPEX and capital CAPEX stabilization accounts and the OPEB reserve accounts as follows, and to meet said appropriation by a transfer of said sum from certified free cash, I just skipped over those, OPEX $87,500, CAPEX $25,000, and OPEB $12,500. And then, or to take any other action related to, related thereto, submitted by the select board, majority vote required. And I think the only thing that I want to mention on this is that, what is it? In the CapEx fund, there are approximately $242,000 in it before this. In the OPED account, there are, as we know, $227,000 in that account. And in the OPEX account, there are, it's almost a million, it's $956,000. So that is the current situation. And it was voted, this is Article 5, right? No, nope, Article 6. Article 6, yes, unanimously, but they want to tell the town in the future to increase these accounts if we are able to. Article 7, funding of community preservation accounts. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of four hundred and fifteen thousand dollars and no cents to the several accounts of the Community Preservation Committee, as recommended by the Community Preservation Committee, as follows the administrative account twenty thousand seven hundred fifty, historic resource reserved forty one thousand five hundred, community housing reserved forty one thousand five hundred, open space and recreation reserve forty one thousand five hundred for a general reserve of twenty six thousand. Well, the general reserve is for twenty six two hundred and sixty nine thousand 
750 for a grand total of 415,000 and to meet said appropriation by a transfer from the community preservation annual revenues which include the amount to be collected as a surcharge on real property real property it can also be called real estate um the real estate tax and the October 2022 state match for the CPC permissible expenses or take any other action related thereto submitted by the select board on behalf of the community preservation committee majority but required and this got a unanimous vote out of the advisory committee so that's favorable article 8 community preservation act b ES appropriation to see if the town will appropriate the sum of one million one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars and no cents for various activities and special articles as follows CC MPZ School Street LLC one yep that's the amount that we already talked about affordable housing so this has to do with affordable housing and it was voted yes unanimously people were very excited about this this is a great thing that we are doing with the town so this is for affordable housing for elderly. This will also have, I believe, low income housing, uh, a few low, com low income housing apartments for um, other people who are not necessarily, you know, in need of that. This, which is required under the law, you know, because of the way that we did this with the affordable housing. And this is being, for those of you who don't know, BES is the Baldwinville Elementary School. It used to be the Baldwinville Elementary School, and so they have redone it into a apartment complex for those people. So people can actually live there. So this is a good thing. Majority vote required. Article 9, Community Preservation Act, Gilman Weight Appropriation. And this is where things start to get really controversial. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of two hundred thirty thirty thousand dollars in no cents for various activities and special articles as follows buildings and grounds two hundred thirty thousand and there's you know those sources of funding or take any other action related to related there too we talked about i believe this was brought up multiple times on the capital planning committee not i believe that i was there and i watched you know that presentation several times I'm not going to really opine on this. What I'm going to tell you is that it there was a no vote with one in favor, and there was recently an informational session because they wanted to get people to vote yes on this. It didn't come out of the advisory committee with a favorable recommendation. There were also concerns because at the end of this, if you've noticed, it, it was not submitted, quote unquote, by the select board, and it doesn't have the majority vote required amendment, uh, not amendment, but notice at the bottom, so there were some concerns about how legally binding this is, considering this is what was voted on. What is on here at this moment is essentially what will be passed in its entirety, so people need to understand that. Article 10, recession, rescission of authorized but unissued debt. Okay, this is actually an interesting one. To see if the town will vote to rescind authorized but unissued debt pursuant to the following town meeting approvals landfill closure the meeting date that this happened on was october 27th of 1988 it was worn article 5 and we'll just run this up to you know half a million or take any other action related that you, you can screenshot this this passed unanimously people were very confused basically what's happening is that the town administrator is trying to go through and trying to get debt that we don't need on the books off of the books but we we never we were authorized to spend this money over 40 years ago you know almost 40 almost 40 years ago but we never spent this money it's still debt that can be accrued on the books but if this passes it'll you know we we won't be able to do that which is good for cleaning up the books so we're probably going to vote yes on this because there's no reason for this to not pass it has a favorable review all right, Article 11, Templeton Scholarship Fund. Now, people wanted to increase this. Obviously, we're not going to this time. But to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $4,000 and no cents to the Templeton Scholarship Fund to be expended by the Templeton Scholarship Committee for the purpose of awarding scholarships to eligible applicants from the town of Templeton or take any other rural action, uh, any other action related thereto. They want to increase it, but obviously, that's going to depend on year by year how much money is in the budget. Submitted by the select board for the Templeton Scholarship Committee. Majority vote required favorable review out of the advisory committee it was a unanimous yes vote article 12 property evaluation account to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide the sum of twenty thousand dollars in no cents 
from the FY22 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the Board of Assessors for full valuation, interim statistical updates, silicical inspections, and the purchase of supportive upgrades or take any other action related thereto submitted by the Board of Selectmen for the Board of Assessors. Majority vote required. And this was Article 12. Yes, unanimously by the advisory board. Article 13, set the salaries of elected town officials. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take a drink. That was only halfway, people. Set the salaries of elected town officials to see if the town will vote in accord with, with the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 41, Section 108 to fix or maintain the salaries of certain elected officials for fiscal year 2022 as follows. The town clerk at $62,078 yearly. Board of Selectmen each get 500, five times five, I mean 500 times five, that's $2,500 that goes to them. The sewer commission each gets 3,000. I don't remember how many people on the sewer commission. There was a whole debate on this, that the water and light need to go in there. However, and I, I am aware of this because, you know, computer engineering is sort of my thing and you know, how that operates in law is something that I've seen a few times. Light is exempt under Section 108 from being mentioned here. However, water and light are together in my town because we have our own separate water system. We have our own separate, it, 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 we have our own electric company. It's a, not electric company, but our own electric plant. It's a whole thing. It's just, it, it's just one of those situations. Did it pass? Article 13. Article 13 voted with a yes vote recommendation. It was not unanimous because people were upset because they wanted water, the water commissioners on here um, from, you know, because that is required under 108, but they're also water and light commissioners. So that, that's a whole chaotic conversation to have or take any other action related thereto submitted by the select board majority vote required. Uh, there's going to be a huge conversation about this and, and again it's because this law you know because you know the light plant the light officials are exempt under this but the water officials are and since they're technically both it, it this is this needs to really be fixed next year like what whatever is going on with this needs to be fixed uh, in, we need a clear definition of if we can do it or not because otherwise the water people should be on here i mean that's just my response to that. All right, Article 14, the Council on Aging. Did this get a favorable review? Yes. Okay, the Council on Aging. To see if the town will vote to adopt the following bylaw pursuant to general law, sec, you know, section 40, I mean, chapter 40, section 8B, relative to the De Templeton Council on Aging, established on May 8, 1976, at the annual town meeting, said bylaw to be inserted as chapter 9, Article 6, and to be read as follows. Section 920, Establishment. There shall be a Council on Aging for the Town of Templeton as established by the Town of Templeton on May 8, 17, 1976 by authority of Chapter 40, Section 8B of the Massachusetts General Laws. Section 921, The Purpose. The Council on Aging shall have the duty and obligation to carry out programs designed to meet the programs of the aging in coordination with programs of the Massachusetts Department of Elder Affairs. Section 922, Membership, compensation, appointment, and terms. The ta council shall consist of five members who shall serve without pay. Potential council members shall be nominated by the majority vote of the existing members of the council, and no member shall be nominated for the council membership. And no member so nominated for the council membership is to serve on the council until appointed by the select board. Such persons shall be appointed on a rotating basis. Each for a three-year term, there shall be at least one a one-year hiatus prior to reappointment after the second full term is served. 9-23, officers, you get the idea, they get to vote for that. 9-24, employees, the council may appoint such clerks and other employees as it requires. 9-24, report, the council shall submit an annual report to the town and shall send a copy thereof to the State Department of Elder Affairs. 9-24, quorum, in voting all meetings of the members of the council, the presence of the three board members shall be necessary and sufficient to constitute a quorum for the presence of business transactions. This is the definition of a meeting under this committee just be aware of that the vote of at least a majority of the council board members present shall be necessary and sufficient to decide such questions on matter the council may adopt procedures and policies governing the conduct of its business consistent with any applicable state 
or local laws or take any other action related to, related thereto. This exists, however, we're doing this just to make sure everything is up to legal par and to just shore up all of these different requirements under the Massachusetts general laws. This was submitted by the Select Board for the Council on Aging Majority Vote Required ahead of unanimous yes vote. Article 15, Disability Commission. To see if the town will vote to adopt the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 8J, relative to the establishment of a commission on disability. Said commission shall consist of five members, which shall be appointed by the Select Board. A majority of said commission members shall consist of people with disabilities. One member shall be a member of the immediate family of a person with a disability, and one member of said commission shall be current Select Board member. And I'm just going to tell you right now... This article did not pass because the advisory board was upset that a select board member would be forced onto it by virtue of their, you know, their current elected office. The terms of the first members of said commission shall be for one, two, or three years, and so arranged that the term of one third of the members expires each year, and their successor shall be appointed for terms of three years each. Any members of said commission may, after a public hearing, if so required, be removed for cause by the appointing authority, a vacancy occurring, sorry, a vacancy occurring, otherwise then by expiration of a term may be filled for the unexpired term in the same manner as an original appointment. The chairperson and the officers shall be chosen by a majority vote of said commission members. Said commission shall keep records of its meetings and actions and shall file an annual report which will be printed in the town or in the city or town annual report and shall have at least 10 meetings annually. Said commission may receive gifts of property, both real and personal, in the name of the town subject to the approval of the select board, such gifts to be managed and controlled by said commission for the purposes of this selection, or to take any other action related thereto, submitted by the select board majority vote required. Again, the advisory committee was not happy because they do not like the idea of a select board member being of an already elected official being on an additional committee, basically having an additional position on top of their elected position. So they're not happy about that. They're also not happy about how the requirements are for membership because they think that pins their responsibilities too much on people with disabilities or people who take care of people with disabilities. And so they weren't happy with that. They want this commission. They just don't want it in this format where it puts people in a tough position instead of allowing the public to go in and be like, okay, we're going to do this. It, it puts a lot of pressure on people with disabilities that they have to be in a, you know, a government role in the town, and that is is stressful enough. You know, it's stressful enough to already have, you know, to be a parent or you know have a loved one that, you know, has a disability, or that you know someone that has a disability, and now you have to join a disability commission. So, that is not going to be easy, and so they voted no on that. They wanted that a lot of that changed. Article 16, FY22, General Fund Operating OPEX Budget. To see if the town shall vote to approve the appropriate the sum of nine million nine hundred thirty-three dollars uh, nine hundred three thousand four hundred and ninety-five dollars and no cents for the operations of general government for fiscal year 2022 and to meet set appropriations by a transfer of two hundred seventy thousand dollars and no cents from the ambulance receipts reserved for appropriation, anticipated receipts in the balance from transit and the balance from taxation, or take any other action related thereto. This is Article 16. Oh, goodness. Yes, vote recommendation. It did not pass by, you know, it passed by a majority, but it was not unanimous. FY17, FY22, uh, Article 17, FY22, Capital Budget. Rolling and stock improvements. See the town will vote to raise the appropriate the sum of 4,688,500 in no cents toward a program of capital purchases and improvements as generally illustrated below. We voted on this back when I was in capital planning and then they presented on it. And I was not there with the presentation because I had resigned by then. I was only on for a few months going through some of that stuff. All right, I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna read the rest of it. It's majority vote required. And it was a yes vote recommendation, but not overwhelmingly. Article 18, FY22, special article, see if the town will raise, will vote to raise an appropriate sum of 38,200 and no cents toward a program of special articles as generally illustrated below. I will leave this up here because I'm not going to go through different items. This is also has to do with capital planning. They decided to input it as another item. The select board did to divvy it up to, I, I suppose, make it more appropriate because in capital planning, things have to be over $10,000 
the Capital Planning Committee in order to appropriate them. Special items under 10000 generally, you know, it, it, sometimes they do go before Capital Planning, but then the Select Board has to deal with it. So, and then to meet said appropriations by a transfer of $38,200 and no cents from certified free cash or take any other action related thereto, submitted by the Select Board, majority vote required. This came out with a barely yes vote recommendation. Article 19, trackless multi-purpose maintenance vehicle. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2,013,750 and no cents or any lower sum to be expended under the direction of the highway department with select board approval for the purchase of a trackless vehicle and to meet said appropriation by transfer from the capital capex stabilization fund. The sum of $113,750 and no cents and to transfer from free cash $100,000 and no cents or take any other action related thereto submitted by the select board. This is the first one that's going to require a different vote than majority. Two thirds of the membership of the town that is present at the meeting have to vote yes. It's not simple majority. It barely got a yes vote from advisory and the reason they didn't like it is this has to do with, you know, this multi-track vehicle would be used. It was presented in front of capital planning as well because it was such a huge amount of money. We ended up not saying yes to that at the time. And this is why it is a special article on here. The reason why it's on here is because this is going to be used. We have 12 miles of sidewalk that are primarily near the high school and the new elementary school. So essentially that's why they need this new device because the old one is breaking down the issue is that this isn't specific enough as to what they're buying so the advisory committee is very torn on this it was a vote i believe of four to three in favor article 20 montachute mode this is where it gets really crazy Monachusett Regional Vocational Technical School to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of six hundred thirty eight thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars and no cents as the amount assessed upon the town for the fiscal year 2022 assessment by the Monachusett Regional Vocational Technical School District for the purposes of educating and transportating the town's enrolled students and capital and debt, inspect debt expenses provided. However, that any stated amount should be reduced to any lesser amount which shall be subsequently be certified by the school committee and certified to the town for fiscal year 2022. So we have a regional vocational technical school that we also pay money to in on top of our regional school committee, they have their own school committee that has different members. It's not what I'm running for. Just be aware of that. And because the member from Templeton is not up for re-election right now. So just be aware of that. What article is this? This is article number 20. This is a yes vote recommendation. This is barely a yes vote recommendation. Um, submitted by the select board for the, you know, the money tech technical school district. Majority vote required. The Narragansett Regional School District's budget, Article 21, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $7,143,838 and no cents as the amount assessed upon the town for the fiscal year 2022 assessment by the Narragansett Regional School District for the purposes of educating and transporting the town's enrolled students provided, however, that any stated amount should be reduced to any lesser amount, which shall subsequently be certified by the school committee and certified to the town for fiscal year 2022 or take any other action related thereto. Submitted by the Select Board for the Narragansett Regional School District. A majority vote required. That got a yes vote recommendation, but it barely got out. People are not happy that it went up by 3%. Article 22, Form of Budget. A non-binding question to see if the town will vote to recommend that the town administrator, pursuant to the discretion of, as to the form in detail afforded by Article 2, Section 28.7 of the bylaws, continue to present the annual budget in an omnibus form rather than line-by-line -line item form, or any other action related thereto submitted by the select board majority vote required. This is non-binding, but basically if this passed, if this failed, what would happen is that there would be another article that the select board would have to actually consider that would make this now binding. I will, I'm actually going to do a video on oops, Article 2, Section 28.7 and what happened in the fall town meeting to, so that people understand what happened because there was a weird discussion that happened on Article 22. Article 22 was a no vote recommendation for the non-binding, but it was because they didn't like that it was non-binding. So we'll see what happens. All right, this is the citizens' petitions. So, Article 23, uh, Julie Farrell did this in the fall one. 
as well, and it didn't pass there. It's called Article 23, Citizens Petition. There are no advisory recommendations on these. It's just a four-eyed petition warning on water bills. It gives the power to the people of the town to control their water bill, and, and not water bill, but how much fluoride is in there, and then the citizens petition for fluoride to basically put a a warning. This one, oh, this one is the warning on the water bills. Article 24 is the actual legislation that gives power. Citizens petition, it's majority vote required. So that is basically how that is. And I have talked for 30 minutes. This is probably the longest video I've done in this channel. I'm going to switch off. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to vote on all of those because it's just, it's just a lot. It's going to be a really long town meeting next week on Wednesday. It's going to be exhausting. We're going to be up and down all you know on the microphone all night. It's going to be... I'm going to get some sleep on Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Let's just go with that because it's going to be one of those. Uh, you could, There are many select board members who are not happy with some of this because they didn't vote yes on certain things. They're not happy. It's going to be a really stressful, stressful town meeting. I thought it was going to go a lot better than this, but especially with all of the not unanimous votes that went through on advisory committee, this is going to be very difficult. It's not necessarily good or bad, it just means it's going to be a long night. So if you're showing up, just be aware this is going to be a long night. It's going to be a lot of debate on the floor of the annual town meeting for the town of Templeton. I don't know, I don't know what else to say about that. It's just, it hasn't gotten better over the past several years. It's only gotten a little bit more stressful, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you for bearing through with me. I hope all of that was tangible. But then again, it was on the screen anyway. Hopefully some of my explanations were informative. Hopefully I clarified some things that happened. And this is also basically just a summary for what happened in advisory committee anyway and what happened with the last vote on select board. So hopefully that is informative. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this content. And that is the video. Thank you. That was, that was a long one.